A blessed Sabbath day, everyone. Thanks for joining us here at Revival Faith Ministries. This is Pastor Rex Frank, and welcome to the 2024 Family Matters. Hallelujah. I hope and pray that everyone is doing well with the help and with the guidance of Almighty Father Yahweh. Thanks to all our brothers and sisters at uh, the Revival Faith family who are, are uh, present here today, and uh, as well as those joining our Sabbath service through our online broadcast. Thank you so much for spending your time with us, and we pray that this message will bring blessings and inspiration in your lives. Can everyone say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Anyway, every February of the year, the ministry focuses on family matters and all our topics, all our discussions, and all our activities revolve around enhancing family relationships and strengthening the faith of each family member. We have been doing family matters for many years now, and we do it with joy because we know just how crucial it is to build strong, resilient families that will honor and serve our Almighty Father Yahweh. So, as we begin this Sabbath day and as we open the 2024 Family Matters, let's talk about a very, very important subject. And it's about the biblical roles of men and women. This is a very important because if we want to improve and if we want to strengthen a family unit, we need to know the designated and ordained biblical functions of men and women. Am I right? In our current society, the true biblical purposes of a man and a woman are no longer being acknowledged and it is being rejected by many people. Many individuals are mixing the roles, mixing the responsibilities of men and women leading to confusion and complications in marital and family relationships. That's why this morning, my friends, let's explore the true biblical definitions and roles of men and women so we will understand the biblical subject or perspective of this matter, okay? So, let's go ahead and open our Bible in Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26 to 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 27. It says, And Elohim said, Let us make man like us, and let us, and let him be head over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over everything that moves on the ground. So Elohim made man in his own likeness. In the likeness of Elohim, he made him. He made both male and female. Hallelujah. Friends, join me as we humble ourselves and pray to Almighty Father Yahweh as we receive his word today. Let us go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father Yahweh, Father Yahweh, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude for bringing us together in this sacred space. On this Sabbath day, we thank you, Father, for the privilege of spending this time with you and with our fellow believers. And as we gather in your presence, we humbly ask you to open our hearts and open our minds to receive your teachings. Guide our thoughts and allow us to absorb the profound and powerful words you have for us today. May we feel your presence and be filled with your spirit. We ask that the words shared by your servants speaking today will be blessed by you. Grant us the understanding, grant us the wisdom to apply these things or these teachings to our lives. Once again, Father Yahweh, we express our gratitude for your boundless love and blessings. All glory, honor, and praise belong to you. In the name of your Son, our Savior, Yahshua Messiah, we offer this prayer. Hallelujah. Everyone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, our message today is entitled Embracing Biblical Manhood and Womanhood. Embracing 
biblical manhood and womanhood. Just like what we have said earlier, we are currently living in a world filled with conflicting messages about gender and identity. We exist in a world that rejects the biblical teachings and understanding of what it means to be a male and female as designed by our Almighty Father Yahweh. The scripture provides us with a very clear framework, a very clear structure for embracing the true functions and roles of men and women in our society according to the biblical perspective. Look at this, my friends. By examining the biblical perspective on the nature of man and woman, we can avoid the confusion and conflict that often arise in understanding these important roles. In Psalms chapter 119 and 130 says, let's go ahead and read that. It says, the, the teaching of your word gives light so even the simple can understand. Friends, through Yahweh's word, we discover or we will discover the right understanding that we, that we will give us clear insight of our designated unique roles and responsibilities. You see, men and women each have their strengths and abilities. And our Almighty Father Yahweh deliberately gave us these unique qualities to work together, complementing and balancing each other out. Friends, when we embrace biblical perspectives and accept the unique roles of both men and women, we can create a strong and a harmonious partnership that will benefit our whole beings. There won't be any competition between men and women. Because they will fully embrace the unique and different tasks assigned by Almighty Father Yahweh. I know, my friends, men and women are equal worth before our Elohim since we are all created in His image. However, we have different duties to fulfill and we must be aware of these assigned duties to avoid any conflict and to avoid any misunderstanding. Just look at this, my friends. Look at this. Many couples think, okay? Many couples think that their marriage is a competition. Maraming mga mag-asawa, mga kapatid, ang nagkakaroon ng confrontations. Maraming mga mag-asawa ang nagkakaroon ng relational challenges dahil ang inaakala po nila ay isang uh, paligsahan ang kalilang pagsasama. Friends, remember this. Marriage is not about competing with each other. Marriage is not about comparing achievements. And marriage is not about outdoing each other. Hindi po ito pagalingan at hindi po ito paramihan ng puntos. Ang pagsasama po ng mag-asawa ay pagtutulungan. Marriage is about supporting each other as a team. It is a combined effort that involves a mutual commitment to each other's well-being and growth and happiness. Tama po ba? However, this partnership or this marriage is not going to be effective, my friends, kung hindi po nila nalalaman ang mga specific roles na dapat ilang gawin bilang isang lalaki, bilang isang babae sa loob po ng kalilang pagsasama. Tama po ba? The unfortunate truth, my friends, is hanggat hindi po ini-embrace ng kalalakihan, hanggat hindi po ini-embrace ng mga kababaihan ang kanilang ordained biblical duties, biblical roles na inassign ng ating amang Yahweh, patuloy po na magkakaroon ng competition, patuloy po magkakaroon ng rivalry sa loob ng kanilang relationship. Friends, the distinctions in masculine and feminine roles are all ordained by Almighty Father Yahweh as part of His creation. Hindi po tao, mga kapatid, ang gumawa ng mga roles and duties ng mga ito. Kundi, sino po ang gumawa ang ating pong amang Yahweh? 
See, when He created man, si Adam po, and when He created the woman, which is Eve, in the book of Genesis, He already, our Almighty Father Yahweh, already assigned these roles and duties at hindi po ito nagbabago. Kung paano po niya ito in-assign in the beginning of time, it is the same purpose kahit sa ating pong kapanahunan ngayon. Tama po ba? So, first, let's talk about the biblical masculinity. Let me ask everyone, especially yung mga kalalakihan ngayon, na nandito, ganun din yung mga nanunood sa atin through our online broadcast. Let me ask you guys, okay? What does it mean to be a man? This is our, my question today. This is our question. What does it mean to be a man? Paano mo o paano po ba natin i-describe ang pagiging isang lalaki? Ano-ano ang mga roles? Ano-ano po ang mga duties na dapat bang gawin ng mga kalalakihan? Napakagandang tanong, di ba? Kung ibabasi po natin, mga kapatid, ang ating pong information from the mainstream uh, media, ang pagiging lalaki daw po, dapat ragged. Alright? Kung ibabasa natin, mga kapatid, ibabasi natin sa mainstream media, dapat daw ang lalaki ay uh, malaki daw ang pangangatawan. Yung kanyang mga kamay ay hindi malambot. Dahil sanay po sa pagtatrabaho. Meron naman po nagsasabi, mga kapatid, na ang pagiging lalaki daw ay nakikita sa dami ng kanyang mga anak. Di ba? Then meron naman na tayong nakikita, mga kapatid, ng mga kalalakihan na sila yung naglilinis ng bahay. Di ba? Sila yung nagluluto. Sila yung naglalaba. Sila yung nag-aalaga ng mga uh, anak nila. So, Ganito po ba ang gawain ng mga kalalakihan? So depending on your source for defining what a man is, iba-iba po. Iba-iba ang nagiging definition, iba-iba po ang nagiging roles ng mga kalalakihan. Depende po kung saan tayo titingin. Tama po ba? However, to avoid to avoid any confusion, To avoid any conflict between men and women, dapat ang mahalagang malaman ay kung ano po ang sinasabi ng banal na aklat. Tama po ba? Our true source ng definition and roles of men must come from our Creator. Dahil siya po ang lumika sa atin. What does our mighty Father Yahweh says about Biblical manhood. Ano po ba ang sinasabi ng ating amang Yahweh? And to better understand the roles and duties of man, let's explore the book of Genesis. Alright? Let's explore the book of Genesis where our Almighty Father Yahweh created Adam. Dito po natin kasi makikita yung three major roles of a man. As our Almighty Father Yahweh Assigned. Let's turn our Bible. Basahin po natin yung mga kapatid. Let's turn our Bible in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. At dito po natin mababasa mga kapatid, yung first major role or major responsibility ng mga kalalakihan. Babasahin po natin sa Bible. Alright? Mismo ang ating amang Yahweh ang magsasabi sa atin kung ano ang mga roles and duties ng mga kalalakihan. All right, let's begin in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Ganito po ang pagkakasabi. And Elohim said, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea." And over the birds of the heavens, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Yung po ang sinabi sa Genesis chapter one verse twenty six. Friends, this passage holds significant implications for the understanding of biblical manhood. All right. So the first major, the first major role of man is to have dominion. To have dominion, to have authority. 
Okay? Men, look at this. Listen to this. Men are entrusted with the role of leadership. Men are called to exercise their authority to lead in a manner that aligns with Yahweh's purpose. So, headship. Look at this. Listen to this, my friends. Headship is assigned to men. Sa marriage at sa kanilang buong pamilya. So, ang tanong natin ngayon, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, kung ang lalaki po ay ini-assign ng ating amang nyawe na maging leader, alright? Maging leader. What does a male leader look like? Okay? What does a male leader look like? Binigyan po ba tayo ng ating amang yawe ng mga guidelines para, pang, para sa mga kalalakihan on how to lead? In the scripture, my friends, our mighty father Yahweh established a pattern, a pattern of male leadership among His people through the priest and through the kings in the Old Testament. He also entrusted men Lalaki po, mga kapatid, ha? He also entrusted men with the leadership authority in the assembly. And we can learn, my friends, from this pattern that He established kung ano-ano po, mga kapatid, ang dapat gawin ng mga kalalakihan. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7, we can read the characteristics of an assembly leader which is dapat po lalaki, hindi babae, okay? So, as leaders of our home, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, we can, um, we can apply these patterns to lead our loved ones in biblical way. Napakaganda po nito. So, let's go ahead and read 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. Babasahin po natin ito. Ang sabi, It is true that if a man wants to be an assembly leader, he wants to do good work. An assembly leader must be a good man. His life must be so no his life must be so no one can say anything against him. He must have only one wife and must be respected for his good living. He must be willing to take people into his home. He must be willing to learn and able to teach the word of Yahweh. He must not get drunk or want to fight. Instead, he must be gentle. He must not have a love for money. Verse 4, He should be a good leader in his own home. His children must obey and respect him. If a man cannot be a good leader in his own home, how can he lead the assembly? Verse 6, An assembly leader must not be a new believer. A new believer might become proud and fall into sin, which is brought on by the devil. An assembly leader must be respected by people who are not believers, so nothing can be said against him. In that way, he will not be trapped by the devil. Friends, since this list describes the, char the, the character of an elder, the character of a, a pastor, it's a great depiction of biblical manhood. Okay? Overall, aside doon sa sinabing uh, he must not be a new believer doon sa verse 6, napakaganda pong itong mga kar characteristics na dapat taglayin ng mga kalalakihan. Sa mga sinabing descriptions na ito mga kapatid ng uh, mga elders or pastors, napakagandang uh, gayahin na mga kalalakihan ang mga ito. Tama po ba? Kahit na hindi po sila mga pastors, kahit na hindi po sila mga elders sa asemblya, ay napakagandang pattern ito para po sa mga kalalakihan. These characters serve as a blueprint for becoming a man of strong character based on biblical principles. Hallelujah! Every man should strive, my friends, to emulate these traits to attain biblical manhood. 
Ano-ano po yung mga qualities kanina na ati pong binasa doon sa 1 Timothy? Uh, 1 Timothy chapter uh, 3 verse 1 to 7. Bas- ang, ang, ano po yung mga qualities ng uh, isang biblical uh, male leadership na sinabi po ni Apostle Paul? Ito po ito. Babasahin po natin. Sabi niyan, His heart set on a good work. He must be a good person. He must have only one spouse. Respected for good living. Willing to take people into your home. Yan po. Willing uh, to learn and teach the word of wisdom. Not getting drunk or seeking conflict. Sabi ganyan, to be a leader, dapat must be gentle. Not having a love for money. And last, yung number 10, being a good leader at home. Isa-isa yun po natin yung mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, okay? Alright. His heart set on good work. Alam nyo mga kapatid, as the leader of your family or, or your future household, you must engage in contributing to the well-being of others and making a positive influence in your home and the community. Kung gusto nyo po maging good leader. Alright? Number two, you must be a, a good person. So, as a leader of your family, my friends, your actions and your decisions reflect, dapat, it will reflect what? Moral integrity. You must set a positive example, mga kapalit makaibigan, mga kalalakihan, for your spouse and for your children. Dapat, you will prioritize kindness, honesty, and respect within your family. All right. Number three, must have only one spouse. So, as the leader of your family, you must demonstrate commitment. You must demonstrate what? Loyalty to your spouse. At kapag ito ay ginawa niyo, mga kapatid, you will provide a stable foundation for your family. Alright? Number four, respected for good Living, respected for good living. So, as the leader of your family, mga kalalakihan, alright, your family members look up to you for your ethical choices and responsible living. You manage your personal affairs in a way that earns the respect and what? Admiration ng mga taong nakapaligid sa iyo, lalong-lalo na ang pamilya mo. Alright? Uh, number five, willing to take people into your home. As the leader of your family, you must show what? Hospitality. Whether it's uh, uh, friends in need or guests, dapat your home is open to others. Creating a warm and welcoming environment. Hallelujah? Alright. Ano yung uh, susunod? Willing to learn and teach the word of wisdom. Okay. This is, this is a very important trait that you must practice, mga kalalakian. Okay? This is a very important trait that you must practice as leader of your household or future household. Okay? You Actively seek opportunities. Dapat kailangan. Sinabi natin, active. Okay? Dapat active kayo to seek uh, opportunities for personal and spiritual growth. You must lead your wife or future wife, future children, alright? And all the people in your household to have spiritual development. Okay? Uh, number seven, not getting drunk or seeking conflict. So bilang mga leader ng inyong household, you must be free from the influence of alcohol or other intoxicating substances. Okay? You must encourage also calm discussions to resolve conflicts within the family. Dapat hindi mainit ang inyong ulo. Alright? Alright, next one. Number eight, must be gentle. Dapat daw, kung gusto mong ikaw ay maging leader, 
ng iyong family, ng inyong household, dapat gentle ka. As a leader of your family, your leadership style is uh, characterized by a balance of strength and gentleness. You handle disagreements with patience, showing understanding and empathy to the, fi- to the family members. Okay? Next, number nine. Kung gusto mo ito yung qualities of, uh, of biblical male leadership, number nine, sabi dapat daw, not having a love for money. So, as a leader of your household, you must show your family that material wealth is not your primary focus sa iyong buhay. Instead, you emphasize, okay? Hear this. Instead, you emphasize the importance of what? Spirituality sa iyong buhay. Following Yahweh's word and putting Yahweh first place in your life. Hallelujah. All right, number 10. Qualities of a biblical male leadership. This is the last one. Being a good leader at home. Being a good leader at home. So as the leader in your family, you prioritize fostering a supportive environment by emphasizing effective communication, ensuring that both your spouse and your children, they will feel heard, they will feel they are valued and connected. Everyone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, these are, look at this, these are very incredible, incredible qualities that make for strong leadership. And these are these are not just for pastors or elders, okay? Hindi lamang ito pang pastor, hindi lang hindi lamang ito pang uh, sa mga elders. These are tra- uh, these are traits that all of us men can adapt to be amazing leaders in our families. Can everyone say hallelujah? Hallelujah. All right. So the second major role of a man assigned by Almighty Father Yahweh is, pupunta na tayo dun sa pangalawang major role ng mga kalalakihan. Handa na po ba kayo? Alright. Is what? To provide. Yan po ang ibinigay ng ating amang Yahweh. Isa sa mga inassign ng ating amang Yahweh na dapat gawin ng mga kalalakihan. To what? To provide. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, our Almighty Father Yahweh instructed the man to what? To work. Basahin po natin. Let's go read that. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Yahweh Elohim took the man and placed him in the garden of Eden in order to have him, what? Work it and guard it. Alright, friends. Abba Yahweh, our mighty father Yahweh, assigned men to provide, to provide, to work, to diligently work and ensure provision for their families. This is a role intentionally assigned by Abayawe since the very beginning of time. Okay? Men, remember this. Okay? Remember this. When you fail, men, listen. When you fail to fulfill your responsibility as the provider for your family, it will affect not only the financial stability of your family, but also the emotional well-being and overall harmony within your household. Tama po ba? You are men, look at this, you are ordained by Almighty Father Yahweh to provide for the material needs of your family. Not your wife, okay? Not your extended families, and not the government. Ano ang sabi sa 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8? Basahin po natin. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. Ang sabi, Anyone who does not take care of his family and those in his house has turned away from the faith. He is worse than a person who has never put his trust in Yahweh. Men, providing 
for your family is very, very important. Ulitin ko sa mga kalalakihan. Providing for your family is very, very important. Failure to fulfill your responsibility as the provider is a significant deviation, a significant departure from the word of Almighty Father Yahweh. Tama po ba? Neglecting the well-being or the needs of your family contradicts the sacred roles and responsibilities that Abba Yahweh has assigned to you. Kapag hindi mo po pinupulfill yung assigned duty sa iyo. That's why I suggest sa mga kalalakihan, do your best. Do your best to provide and diligently fulfill your your responsibilities. Okay? And by doing this, my friends, by doing this, kapag ikaw ay nagpo-provide na maayos, you're working diligently. By doing this, you not only contribute to the well-being and stability of your family, but you honor the ordained role that Abba Yahweh assigned to you. Hallelujah! Alright. The third major role. Yung pangatlo na po tayo, okay? The third major role that Abba Yahweh assigned to men, yung pangatlo, is to what? To protect. To protect. Okay? Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Basahin po natin yan. Sabi nga yan, Yahweh Elohim took the man and placed him in the garden. Binasa natin ito kanina. Basahin natin ulit. Yahweh Elohim took the man and placed him in the garden of Eden in order to have him work. Yun yung sinabi natin. Ano yung susunod? And guard it. And guard it. Okay? So, Abba Yahweh assigned men to be the protectors, to be the guardians, to be watchmen of their families. Men must be committed to protect their families by all means from potential physical, emotional, and spiritual threats, dangers, or harm. Kapag sinabi po natin mga kapatid, na by all means, men should do everything. Ulitin ko. Men should do everything they can to protect their families. However, my friends, it's crucial to do what is biblically upright and legal. Okay? Yung action natin, our actions should be responsible and morally and spiritually correct and align with our beliefs. Okay? So, kung ang mga kalalakihan, mga kapatid, ay ini-assign ng ating amang Yahweh to be a protector, to be a guardian, to be a, a watchman, anong mga bagay? Napakagandang pag-usapan nito, okay? Ano, ano ang mga bagay na dapat pinoprotektahan ng mga kalalakihan sa kanyang pamilya. Alright? Ano-ano ang mga bagay na dapat pinoprotektahan ng mga kalalakihan sa kanyang pamilya? There are three main, or let me say, there are three aspects. Three aspects. Men should protect in their families. May tatlong bagay na dapat pinoprotektahan ng mga kalalakihan sa kanilang pamilya. Alright? The first one is what? Spiritual protection. Spiritual protection. Okay? You must guide. Okay? Yung iyong family. Guiding your family in matters of faith. Dapat you are instilling biblical values that can serve as a source of strength and guidance in their spiritual journey. Ever mo say hallelujah? Ano po ang sabi sa Ephesians chapter 5? Verse 25 to 26. Sabi nga yan, For husbands, this means love your wives just as Yeshua loved the assembly. He gave up His life for her 
to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of Yahweh's word. All right. The term used in this passage, yung binasa natin kanina, sinabi, wash by the cleansing of Yahweh's word. This means husbands, mga kalalakihan, must provide spiritual protection to their wives by teaching them the word of our Almighty Father Yahweh. Making their marital relationship rooted in what? In the principles and teachings found in the Bible. Okay? Men, when you do this, kapag ginawa po nito, mga kalalakihan, alright? When you do this, you are creating a purposeful union that reflects the goodness of Almighty Father Yahweh in every aspect of your lives. Kaya napakaganda na pinoprotektahan ninyo yung spiritual na buhay. Hindi lamang sa iyo, kundi yung iyong asawa at iyong mga anak or you can say, buong pamilya. Alright? Now, let's go to the second responsibility of men in protecting their families. Ano yung pangalawa? Sabi natin tatlo, di ba? Yung una is what? Spiritual protection. Yung pangalawa naman ay physical protection. All right, men must provide physical physical protection sa kanilang pamilya o sa kanyang asawa. All right, this can uh, involve in ensuring uh, uh, the safety of their loved ones from potential physical threats, potential dangers or harm. Okay, this may include taking measures to secure your home. Uh, being uh, vigilant in unfamiliar surroundings and actively intervening to prevent physical harm sa iyong mga mahal sa buhay. Sabi po sa Psalm uh, 82, Psalm 82 verse 3 to 4, ganito po pagkakasabi, sabi, defend the weak and the orphans, defend the rights of the poor and suffering. Save the weak and helpless. Free them from the power of the wicked. Okay. This verse, my friends, encourages the protection of those who are vulnerable. Kasama yan, including family members who may need defending from any potential physical threats, dangers, or harm. Alright? Okay. The third responsibility of men in protecting their families, mga kapatid, is to provide what? Sinabi natin kanina, spiritual protection, physical protection, na dapat na ibinibigay ng kalalakihan. Ano yung pangatlo? Ano yung pangatlo? Na dapat pinoprotect o pinoprotectahan ng mga kalalakihan sa kanilang uh, pamilya. Number three is emotional protection. Emotional protection. Alright? Alam nyo mga kapatid, protection extends beyond physical safety. It also includes taking care of the emotional health and happiness of your loved ones. Okay? So, hindi lamang spiritual protection, hindi lamang physical protection ang kailangan ng inyong mga mahal sa buhay, kundi kailangan din nila ng emotional protection. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. Ganito mo pagkakasabi. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Hallelujah! So, this verse encourages believers to uplift and support each other. In the context of a family of, or family, it can be seen as an encouragement for men to actively, what? Contribute to the emotional well-being of their loved ones by offering words of encouragement, understanding, and support to their loved ones. Okay? Can everyone say hallelujah? Hallelujah. So, friends, napag-aralan natin 
na pag-aralan natin ngayon yung three major roles of men na ini-assign or inordain ng ating amang Yahweh para sa mga kalalakihan. Ano-ano po yung mga to? Yung tatlong major roles ng mga kalalakihan, mga kapatid? Alright? Ito, yung uh, men are what? Entrusted to? To lead. Number two, they are assigned to what? To provide. And number three, men are instructed to what? To protect. Okay? Let us remember, my friends, lalo na yung mga kalalakihan, that these are biblical roles of men. These are not suggestions, my friends. Hindi po lang po sinasuggest ito ng ating amang Yahweh. Ito yung dapat na ginagawa ng mga kalalakihan. To lead, to provide, and to protect. Okay? He created, our mighty Father Yahweh created this for the fulfillment of His great plan and a well-ordered existence of humanity aligned with His sacred principles. Everyone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, let's explore, let's explore yung tatlong major biblical roles naman ng mga kababaihan that was uh, ordained by Almighty Father Yahweh. Three major biblical roles that Yahweh has ordained for women. Alam nyo mga kapatid, in our society today, Okay, in today's society, the biblical role of women is often overlooked at hindi po binibigyan na, na o hindi po binibigyan ng pansin. Okay? Unfortunately, kahit na iyong mga kababaihan mismo, yung mga kababaihan mismo, mga kapatid, ay disregard nila itong mga ordained roles na ito to pursue their personal success. More and more, na mga kababaihan or women are stepping away from the original roles that Abba Yahweh assigned them to do. Society, my friends, is urging women to be themselves and not to follow Biblical principles. Gawin mo kung anong gusto mong gawin. Kung saan ka masaya yun ang gawin mo. And they are neglecting the biblical principles na ibinigay sa kanila ng ating amang Yahweh. Alam nyo mga kapatid, because of this kind of thinking, dahil sa ganitong kaisipan, maraming mga kababaihan ngayon ang feeling pressured, they're feeling stressed out dahil sa worldly expectations na inaasahan na gagawin po nila. Friends, these expectations, these roles imposed by society are not biblical roles. Hindi po ito yung mga ipinagagawa ng ating amang nyawe sa mga kababaihan. And look at this, my friends. Look at this. Anything that goes against the principles of Almighty Father Yahweh can lead to challenges and difficulties, sometimes problems, sa buhay ng isang tao. Ano po ang sabi mga kapatid sa Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5? Ang sabi, this is what Yahweh says, Bad things will happen to those who put their trust in people. Bad things will happen to those who depend on human strength. That is because they have stopped trusting Yahweh. However, kapag ang mga kababaihan, mga kapatid, will only embrace and align themselves doon sa mga roles na ibinigay ng ating amang Yahweh, they not only fulfill their assigned purpose, but also they will find profound fulfillment and joy in embracing the essence of womanhood. So, mga kapatid, sa mga kababaihan, what are the major roles of women as ordained by Romani Father Yahweh? Ano po ba yung mga dapat ginagawa? Ano ba yung mga roles na dapat gampanan ng mga kababaihan 
na ibinigay o inassign sa kanila ng ating ama. So the first major role of women was mentioned in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Basahin po natin yan. Ang sabi nga yan, Then Yahweh Elohim said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is right for him. Okay? So, the first significant major role assigned to women is to serve as the essential helpmate. Helpmate or helper to men. Women being a helpmate is not just a small or an important task. Helpmate, pag sinabi mong helpmate mga kapatid, or helper to men, it holds a lot of value and is crucial within the purpose that Abba Yahweh intended for them to do. The word helper holds a position of great honor and respect. And it suggests that the title is not ordinary, it is not common, but carries a special significance and is regarded with high recognition. Did you know, my friends, that the word helper, yung word, yung salitang helper, was used, okay, to describe our Almighty Father, Yahweh. Basahin po natin. Let's read Psalm 54. Psalm 54, verse, uh, verse 4. Ang sabi, Yahweh is my helper. Yahweh is the provider for my life. Can everyone say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Alright. Our mighty father Yahweh is often called the helper of people in the Old Testament. Without Yahweh's help, people will be in big Trouble. Tandaan po natin yan, mga kapatid. Kung wala ang ating amang Yahweh, we are in big trouble. Just like Adam, okay, he needed Eve to help him faithfully carry out Yahweh's commission and commands. Adam would not have been able to fulfill his ordained role without the help of Eve by his side. Ganun na lang kahalaga ang tulong ng mga kababaihan sa mga kalalakihan. Alright? Women play a vital role in the harmony and completeness of Yahweh's divine plan. And without the help of women, something essential, something important would be missing. Okay? Look at this, my friends. There are four. There are four ways. May apat na bagay, may, may, may uh, apat na uh, pamamara o ways ang mga kababayan to help men in their lives. There are four ways women can help the men sa kanila pong buhay. Gusto niyo po bang malaman? Alright? Gusto niyo, gusto malaman ng mga kababayan kung paano nila, uh, paano sila makakatulong sa kanilang uh, uh, mga Mahal sa buhay, sa kanilang asawang lalaki. Alright? The first one, mga kapatid, is to encourage. Yan. To encourage. Yan na pwedeng i-help ng mga kababayahan sa kalalakihan. To encourage. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. Ganito po ang pagkakasabi. Two people are better than one. When two people work together, they get more work done. If one person falls, the other person can reach out to help. But those who are alone, when they fall, have no one to help them. Friends, the concept of two are better than one implies partnership. It implies the collaboration, emphasizing the benefits of working together as husband and wife. Women as helpers contribute significantly by providing encouragement, by providing positive reinforcement, by providing motivation and sense of affirmation sa mga kalalakihan. And look at this, my friends. Encouragement is a recurring theme in the Bible. Lagi po natin yung mababasa. Emphasizing the need for believers to uplift and support one another. 
And this principle, my friends, extend to all relationships, including those between husbands and wives. Women or wives can positively motivate their husbands or their families by recognizing and affirming accomplishments, kahit ito po ay malaking accomplishment or small achievements, ay nakakapagbigay ng positive motivation ang mga kababaihan sa kalalakihan at sa kanilang buong pamilya by affirming their accomplishments. Can I say hallelujah? Alright. The second way, the second way women can help the men in their lives is to be what? Submissive. Be submissive. Gayon nyo matutulungan ang inyong uh, yung mga kalalakihan, yung inyong asawang lalaki. Alright? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 24. Basahin po natin yan. Ang sabi, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to Yeshua. For the husband is the head of the wife as Yeshua is the head of the assembly, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the assembly submits to the Messiah, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Ano daw? In everything. Wives must submit to their husbands in what? Partial ba? No, sabi niya, in everything. See, the concept of submission in this context is not about inferiority or it's not about oppression. Okay? Wives' submission has been misunderstood. Wives' submission has been misinterpreted in today's culture. Nagkaroon po ng negative meaning yung pagiging submissive ng babae sa kanilang asawa sa ating pong kapanahonan ngayon. Ang pagiging submissive ng asawang babae, mga kapatid, tandaan po natin, ay naka-align sa mga salita ng ating amang yawe. Submission is the willingness of the wives to respect, to honor, and support the leadership role that Yahweh has assigned to their husbands. Okay? Wives' submission to their husbands is a reflection of the biblical order that Yahweh has assigned for the family unit. It reflects the desire of the wives to honor our Almighty Father Yahweh kapag po sila ay submissive sa kanilang uh, asawang lalaki. Tandaan po natin yung mga kababaihan. Tandaan po natin. Kapag ang babaeng asawa ay nagsasubmit sa kanilang asawang lalaki ang tunay nilang binibigyan ng karangalan, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, ay hindi yung lalaki, kundi sino? Yung ating, yung, si Amang Yahweh. And that's why, my friends, that's why wives must practice submission to better their relationship with their husbands and most especially to better their relationship kanino sa ating Amang Yahweh. Can everyone say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Alright. The third way women can help men in their lives involves what? Showing respect. Showing respect. Okay? Ano ang sabi po sa Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33? Basahin po natin. Ang sabi, However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife, look at this, and the wife must respect her husband. The wife must respect her husband. The biblical call, my friends, for wives to respect their husband, husbands is not a sign of weakness. Okay, ulitin ko mga kapatid. The biblical call for wives to respect their husbands is not a sign of weakness or inequality, but a demonstration of Yahweh's divine or holy order within the marriage. When a wife 
shows respect. Look at this. When a wife shows respect to her husband, okay, to her husband, she affirms his value, his leadership, and role within the marriage. And when a husband, okay, and when a husband feels respected by his wife, okay, pag ang, ang kalalakihan o ang lalaking, lalaki na naramdaman niya yung respeto na galing sa kanyang asawang babae, he is encouraged to fulfill his role with confidence and humility. Alam niyo mga kapatid, Respect creates an environment where the husband and wife feel valued. They feel appreciated, fostering a sense of unity and harmony within the marriage. Okay? Kaya napakahalaga mga kapatid na ang mga asawang babae ay nagpapakita ng respeto sa kanilang asawang lalaki dahil nakakatulong ito hindi lamang sa lalaki kundi sa babae at sa buong pamilya nila. Ewan mo say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alright. The fourth way women can help men is through investing in spiritual growth. Investing in spiritual growth. Sabi po sa Proverbs 31 verse 30 sabi nga yan, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But, look at this, but a woman who fears Yahweh is to be praised. A woman who fears Yahweh is to be praised. Look at this, my friends. Wives can encourage their husbands and their entire family on their spiritual journey. This involves praying together, participating in spiritual activities, and fostering an environment where family can grow in their faith. Alright? Alam po natin mga kapatid, sinabi natin kanina, we know that the husbands are spiritual leaders. Silang, ang mga kalalakihan, sila ang mga spiritual leaders sa tahanan. However, my friends, wives, ang mga kababaihan, okay, nurtured the environment for spiritual growth. Okay? Paano nangyayari ito? Sa pamamagitan ng spiritual education sa, pam- na, sa kanilang mga anak. Yung pagkikreate nila ng sacred spaces at home. Na-assign yan sa kababaihan And providing spiritual support for hindi lang sa kalalakihan, kundi for the entire family. Hallelujah? So nakita natin. Nakita natin ngayon, mga kapatid makibigan kung sa paanong pamamaraan makakatulong ang mga kababaihan sa kanilang asawa. And we have enumerated these ways para may apply po ito ng mga kababaihan sa loob ng kanilang mga tahanan. Hallelujah! Alright, now let's discuss the second major role. Okay? Yung una, sabi natin yung, yung unang major role ng, ng uh, kababaihan ay to be a helpmate. Yung pangalawa naman na major role ng kababayan is what? Na inordained ng ating amang Yahweh is to cultivate life. Cultivate life. Sabi po sa Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, babasahin po natin yan, tapos babasahin din natin ang Genesis chapter 3, verse 20, unahin po natin yung 1, to 20, 1 and uh, 28. Sabi nga yan, Yahweh blessed them, Genesis 1, Verse 28, sabi, Yahweh blessed them and said, Have many children and grow in number. Fill the earth and be its master. Basahin po natin naman mga kapatid, ang Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. Ang sabi, Adam named his wife Eve. He gave her this name because Eve would be the mother of everyone who ever lived. Alright? Look at this. One of the crucial role of women is to contribute to the creation of a world that mirrors Yahweh's attributes. A world characterized by His love, by His mercy, and by His grace. Alam nyo mga kapatid, 
Cultivating life is a sacred calling para sa mga kababaihan. Women are co-workers with our Almighty Father Yahweh. They actively participating in the ongoing process of creation. And this goes beyond the biological aspect of childbirth. Because it involves a broader sense of nurturing, shaping and fostering life that reflects the love and the grace of Almighty and the mercy of Almighty Father Yahweh. It reflects the physical continuation of life through childbirth and the theological significance of being a part of Yahweh's plan. Ano yung plan na yon? To make things right and bring people closer to Him. Kaya napakaganda, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, ng major role, itong pangalawang major role na ginagampanan o dapat gampanan ng mga kababaihan. Ewan mo say hallelujah. All right. The third major role that Abba Yahweh has, has ordained for women is to what? Yung pangatlo. Okay, the first one, sabi natin kanina mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, to be a helpmate. Second one, to cultivate life. Yung pangatlo mga kapatid, to serve as a companions to men. To serve as companions to men. Let's read Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Ganito pong pagkakasabi, mga kapatid. Sabi ngayon, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Alright? Friends, I encourage everyone to take note of the term one flesh. One flesh. Which means a deep spiritual and physical connection between a husband and wife. See, our mighty Father Yahweh established companionship as one of the key components of human relationships. Recognizing that it was not good for the man to be alone. So, ano ginawa ng ating amang Yahweh? He graciously created women to be man's cherished companion. Hallelujah! Look at this, my friends. The term companion is used to describe someone who is not just a helper or an assistant. Kanina sinabi natin, mga kapatid, na isa sa mga roles ng mga babae ay maging helper. Tama po ba? Now, hindi lamang helper ang mga babae sa lalaki, kundi isa siyang companion. She is a life partner. Walking side by side, facing the challenges and celebrating uh, the victories together as one flesh. Hallelujah! As companions, women provide warmth and love to our homes, creating an environment where we find peace and comfort. Ano po ang sabi sa Proverbs 14? Verse 1, sabi, the wise man, the wise woman builds her house, but with her own, but with her own hands. The foolish one tears hers down. Nakita niyo mga kapatid? Friends, this biblical verse portrays a wise woman as someone who actively contributes to shaping the atmosphere of the home. It highlights the significance of their positive contribution and efforts in building a thriving and secure family environment. Friends, in Yahweh's ordained plan, women play a very, very important role in establishing a successful and harmonious partnership between a man and a woman or within the sacred union of husband and wife. Kaya napakahalagang malaman, mga kapatid, ang mga ito, diba? napakahalaga na, na malaman ang mga ito ng mga kababayahan because our Almighty Father Yahweh assigned these important responsibilities for the women to accomplish. Dahil kapag hindi po ito nagawa ng mga kababaihan, mga kapatid, kapag hindi ito sinunod, itong ordained uh, assignment, kapag hindi sinunod ng mga kababaihan, mga kapatid, itong ipinagagawa sa kanila ng ating uh, amang Yahweh, meron po itong negative effect. May negative effect po ito. Kaya nga pinagagawa ito. This is not a suggestion. Ito po yung pinagagawa ng ating amang Yahweh. Let's read Titus kung ano po yung magiging epekto nito kapag hindi ginawa ito ng mga kababaihan. 
itong major roles na dapat nilang gawin. Sabing ganyan, Titus chapter 2, verse 4 to 5, that they may teach the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, and to be self-controlled, pure, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Yahweh may not be, what? Dishonored. When women do not fulfill the roles ordained for them by Almighty Father Yahweh, Yahweh's word are not being honored. Sabi nga niyan, nalalapastangan at napipintasan ang mga salita ng ating amang Yahweh kapag hindi ginagawa ito ng mga kababaihan. Yan po ang sabi. And that's why I suggest today, my friends, that women must fulfill their commitment Commit themselves, okay, to fulfilling these important roles. Ano itong mga important roles, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, na dapat nilang gawin? Sabi niyan, be a helper sa mga kalalakihan. Be, uh, cultivate life. At yung pangatlo, become a companion sa mga kalalakihan. Can I say hallelujah? Hallelujah. So, as our closing passage today, my friends, let's turn our Bible to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ganito po ang pagkakasabi. Ang sabi, For we are Yahweh's handiwork, created in Yeshua Messiah to do good works, which Yahweh prepared in advance for us to do. Hallelujah. Friends, as we conclude our discussion today, let us remember that we must embrace our important roles as men and women to fulfill the purposes that Almighty Father Yahweh ordained us to do. And by recognizing our unique purpose and obeying Yahweh's words, we actively contribute to the realization of His grand plan for each and every one of us. Friends, I hope and pray, mga kapatid, na marami po tayong napag-aralan sa ating pong first topic ng ating Family Matters 2024 sa taong pong ito. And may this message further improve and enrich our family relationships, deepening our connection with our Almighty Father Yahweh as a united family. Can everyone say hallelujah? Hallelujah! Friends, sumayin nyo na wa, ang kapayapaan, ang pag-ibig at pananampalataya na nagbumula sa ating Amang Yawe at sa ating Misa Yeshua. Pagpalain na wa ng ating Misa Yeshua, ang lahat na nagmamahal sa Kanya ng tapat. Ewan mo say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Friends, let's go ahead and pray. Father Yawe, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your word and for allowing us to reflect on your ordained roles for men and women. Father Yahweh, grant us the wisdom to embrace our unique identities, our unique roles with humility and with understanding. May your word be a guiding light for us to follow in love, in respect, and mutual support. Father Yahweh, empower us to foster relationships marked by compassion, marked by kindness and grace. Strengthen the bonds within families and communities as we recognize and honor the distinct contributions of both men and women. Father Yahweh, may your spirit continue to enlighten our hearts and shape us according to your amazing words so all the things that we are going to do will be according to your will. Father Yahweh, once again, we thank you and we bring back all the glory and praise to your wonderful and powerful name and we ask all these things through the name of your Son, our Savior, Yashua Messiah. Hallelujah. Everyone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, let's go ahead and raise our hands and receive the blessings from Almighty Father Yahweh. Yevareka ka Yahweh viishmereka. Yair Yahweh panebeleka vikunika. Yese Yahweh panebeleka. Vyesem leka. Shalom. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh make shine His face on you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up His face unto you and give you peace. May Almighty Father Yahweh bless us all. Happy Sabbath everyone. Hallelujah.